Good evening. The time is 10.23 p.m. The date is the 7th of January, 2021. Today is my birthday. As I told you earlier, we're going to make a team, a football team. And I've described and told you everything about a football team. And especially what we're going to stand for. What we're going to what? Stand for. So, remember there are two football teams. There's the Black Stars, the Black Starlets, both of England. And then there's the White Stars and the White Starlets, both of England. So, now we're going to design their t-shirts. And it's going to what? Stand for something. So, we're going to design their football jerseys. And it's going to stand for something. It's going to stand for something. So, first of all, the color of the football jersey, the home, the home jersey, is going to be black gray. Black gray. Everything is going to be black gray. Black to gray. The back, the back, is going to be lighter or darker stars or black stars either lighter or darker imprinted inside them small little stars with big ones amongst them cleverly positioned all over that's the back of the t-shirt the numbering and the naming system will, will be built out of tiny little stars the front, the front. We need a badge. We will create a badge. So, this is the badge. This is what the badge would look like. Please, I want you to understand my words carefully. I said, this is what the badge would look like. It means what I'm about to tell you what the badge looks like is a comparison to it but it is not it and then I'm going to explain our one to you okay so you're going to draw a little box that looks like the British flag not the St. George's flag but the British flag itself and you know what that looks like. It's a, a mainly blue flag divided in the middle by a red cross and by the sides um, and by diagonally, by red diagonals and white in the middle. The three main colors are red, white and blue. Those are the three primary co um, colors involved in the British flag but but having that shape ignore the coloring system ignore the coloring system just the shape so you can imagine a British flag that has no colors and it is dark gray but it has all the markings in it you need it and I'm going to explain why because we are going to do exactly what the British did we are going to draw our attack plan, our attack formula, and we're going to wear it as a badge of honor. So what I'm about to describe to you is an ancient game of the Akan. But this game was to teach you how to defend, how to attack, and how to win. But it had a blueprint, and the blueprint is what I've just told you to draw but it looks similar listen carefully the blueprint of this particular game which is a tactical formation for war attack and defense distract and attack everything included it looks similar to the british flag but it is a game of self-defense and attack of the account is the war the ultimate war blueprint 
Once you have drawn that shape, in the middle, we're going to have a black star. So imagine the British flag with a black star. If it is the white star left, we're going to reverse that coloring system. It's going to be white. Mainly, instead of um, dark gray, black, we're going to have white. So the reverse of everything I'm telling you. Now, let's explain. Because I'm showing you our team's formula for winning. How our team will always win. And we're going to put the blueprint out. But because we know it, and we're going to show you something different. We're going to bring a new style of football. But we're going to show you what we stand for. This, this game, this game is an ancient game our ancestors developed to help even children defend the honor of our nations. So, if you take a look in the middle, in the middle of the shape you have drawn, you're going to see that there's a cross, there's a cross section, yeah, a cross section. That cross section is thick, is a thick line. You see it? Good. Across that cross section, are two similar cross sections but diagonal they are less thicker lines if you understand what i'm saying they are less thicker now when you have drawn these things in count how many sections you have you will notice you have eight sections eight sections eight sections those divisions divide everything into the eight sections. Now, if you look on the British flag where everything is illuminated by color, you're going to see it better because those eight sections, the biggest part of them will be the blue parts. The blue parts. And I will explain all that to you in a minute. Okay, so now, Imagine you're facing an army. This is what the Akans, this is what they did, this is what they did. Because the Akans, they lived in the middle of the forest. Kumasi was in the middle of the forest. They do not kill the forest. They go into the center of the forest and they live there. Why? Because they use the forest as a defense tactic. Guerrilla warfare. The British will tell you that the first guerrilla warfare they experienced was with the Akans in Africa. Why? Because once they entered the bushes, they would lose. So how did the Akans manage to force the British to enter the bushes? This is how you do it. The Akans taught their people, corral, corral your enemy. Corral your enemy into controllable, sizable portion. So, I'll give you an example, for example. The blue bits in the British flag. That's the blue army, the British army. They always come in a box formation and they're always marching. If you meet them on the plains field, you can't penetrate them. Are you understanding this? You cannot penetrate them because they're tight. And they, at back then, they use a revolutionary system. When I fire, while I'm loading, you fire, you fire, you fire. It becomes really hard to penetrate them. So the Akans, so the Akans, they turn to the ancient methods that their ancestors taught them, which was this formation. You have to corral the enemy into a box. So imagine the British flag without the red and the white markings. Everything is blue. Just imagine that. They are marching. There are 10,000 of them. Tight formation to make sure you don't penetrate. And they are marching. Now the Akans, the British themselves will tell you that they, the Akans, always came to war with with 
maybe three times less warriors than you came to war with. But they were very fierce. So there was always very little. But they relied heavily on tactics. So we're going to give an example, for example, we're going to say, watch this. There are 5,000 British soldiers marching and there are a thousand Ashanti warriors to defend Ghana. Now the Ashanti warriors know they are outnumbered by what? 5,000? So yeah, five to one. You see what I mean? Or oh, let's say, if, yeah, five to one. Because of this, the Ashantis will say, okay, we need to be tactical. So watch. They will divide their army. They would what? Divide their army into eight quarters. Not, not exact quarters. I'll give you the numbers in a minute. They will divide their army into eight sections, but particular eight sections. So for example, they have a thousand to take care of five thousand. The first dissection is the thick lines. They need more soldiers to create a danger zone. So they need to penetrate the, the British soldiers. They need to penetrate them. But get this, the British soldiers are tight. So they need to create a danger zone. Hence why it is red. It is a danger zone. If you step into that middle as a blue coat, your blue coat will turn bloody. The Akans knew that they needed to divide the British into four. So that was the first plan. How are you going to do that? Out of a thousand soldiers, take 700 and divide 700 into four. You're going to get 175. Place 175 soldiers at four corners. There's 300 left. Divide 300 into four. You're going to get 75. Now, you see the smaller red section? The smaller red section. This is why it is there. Once you have quartered the enemy into four, 5,000 into four is what? 1,250. No, sorry, 1,025, um, I believe. Yeah, into four. But you need to further reduce that number. So once the 175 are all positioned, you give the order to attack. But get this, when they start attacking, they are not attacking the whole of the British fleet. They're attacking a particular section. They're trying to do what Moses did. They're trying to split the waters. It's called divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. So get this. They will concentrate all their efforts into these four sections. To make sure that the British do not um, escape and then regroup because they've only divided it into four. They then create a second division using less soldiers less but with the confusion and guns and attacks going off at all directions you are actually going to think that they are matching 5,000 to 5,000 but the whole aim is directed at keeping the British army to flee but to flee into certain directions and not to govern because when they're divided, they are weaker. So, if you notice, the blue sections, now from, from 100%, they were divided into four quarters, 25% each. But if you look carefully, with the cross sections involved now, 
they have been further divided down to let's say one of them is 10% and one of them is 15% there's been a reduction because the bloody area you see or the bloody areas you see those are all deaths those are all danger zones so the attack plan is simple you have less on the pitch but it is not it is not that that counts is how and where you place where you place what you do have on the pitch so what the accounts will do once everyone is in position the attack will start in the melee 10% will flee that way, 15% will flee that way. Altogether, eight sections. But the accounts will always make sure that the fire and power makes you flee into the bushes. Because once you stay in the open, you think they attack him from all angles. So if you manage to flee, you are going to head in the direction of cover, which they have intentionally left open. You, you, you're going to see that death is coming from here, but that angle, so keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Once they have dispersed you, now we come back down to one to five. So the ratio is 1,000 to 5,000. Now in the bushes though, in the bushes, the Akan soldiers had the trees so they, they were making up the numbers. They had the poisons. They were making up the numbers. They had the animals to cover their tracks. They were making up the numbers. To cover their, their sounds. They were using animal sounds now to talk. Cutthroats. Once you entered those bushes, that was it. And the plan was very simple. Divide and conquer. That's why the British are so, so, so good at conquering people. Because it is their motto. It is what their motto. The flag is not theirs. I'll be honest with you. I'll show you where that flag actually comes from. The colors are theirs. But the system itself, it isn't a British Museum. It's a gold weight and a can gold weight, which was used to stamp to make things official. But this one was one the British understood very well. It was one they understood very well. Because they saw us playing the game, teaching our kids how to play. You see in the game, the whole aim of the game is for me to get three. I'll play the game for you to see. Don't worry. I'll play it for you to see. But yes, that's why we're going to have that badge. Because that is our tag formula. We're going to divide tear apart and conquer racism using the greatest war blueprint that has ever been developed that has conquered the world now the owners of this blueprint are going to use it to conquer England and bring love and peace to England so when you see a blood style like Jesse um Jersey sorry or a black stars jersey or a white on starlet jersey or a white star jersey just know that's a football agent that's a football army attack plan you understand what i'm saying attack plan eight by four shrink them down from eight to four sorry shrink them up from four to eight and then disperse them confuse them you understand what I'm saying? Confuse them. Create danger zones they can't step into. 
great danger zones they can't step into. But marginalize your danger zones because you really want to divide them. So first divide them into two and then cross that and make that divide them into four and then further cross section that and divide them into eight and then use the diversionary tactics to make them think staying in that formation is certain doom but taking cover in the bushes gives them a chance We're going to take this formation onto the football pitch. We're going to take this ideology onto the football pitch. We're going to conquer hearts. We're going to restore love to football. Even when we lose, they'll give us the prize. I'm being honest with you. Even when we lose, they'll give us the prize. But get this, not only that, I'm going to show you as well that our ancestors also left us with a time formula and this is how our routine is going to go. It's called the Owari Time Code. It's also a game. The Owari is a game. And we're going to train in accordance to the Owari Time Code. I will explain it quickly to you. Um, Morning, afternoon, evening and night. Each one of these is worth six hours. So the English time code is 6666. 6666. Six, six, six. That's four sixes. Morning, evening, afternoon and night. They mean nothing to your health. The words themselves, if you check the dictionary, it doesn't apply anything to your health. So we are going to switch and go to the can time system which works on the Owari time code. So understand this. Instead of 66666, six, 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 the Owari, you have six holes. And in each hole, you have four seeds. That's four by six. The English one is six by four. Reversed. We're reversing the sin. We're reversing everything to get it better. So the English one gives you four, and in each 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 of the four it gives you six. But the account one gives you six, and in each of the six it reduces it and gives you four. But then ends up giving you two more pots. So what do they mean? We start at 12, 12 midnight. It's called Adir Achin. Adir Achin. Adir means something. Achit means has been caught. Well, if you've made it past 12, it means you have caught time. So yes, you have caught something. You have caught time. That's the first pot. Four hours. The next pot, second pot, four hours. Listen carefully to this one. The first hour in those four hours, the first hour is called Ma Chi. Ma means I. Chi means have caught. It's probably the time where we're getting up to, you know, get ready for training. So you're up, so you know you have caught something. So marching. The next two hours, the next two hours, listen, they're very special. They're the greatest exercises we would do to win football matches. The next two hours, each of the hours is called Ahum Achi. Ahum Achi. Ahum means breath. Achi means has been caught. Or to breathe and to catch your breath. What does that mean? My people are saying for two hours at that time of the morning, you should do what is called breathing exercise to catch your breath. Why? Because the greatest muscle that we need to take is our heart. We need it to play football. But we can't train it in the gym like we train everything else. So the best way to train it is to touch it. But the only way to touch your heart is But if you're doing it at a time where the air is filthy and polluted, you're hurting the heart. 
but at that time of the morning where the air has been saturated by the trees all the carbon dioxide has been sucked into the trees overnight and all the oxygen has been released so now you're taking in the cleanest form of air into you to release all gases out of you and to replace and replenish clean energy inside you but at the same time just like you train your arms and your legs you're doing exactly the same to the heart muscle and to the lungs and to their capacity to perform why because you're contracting and retracting and contracting and retracting specifically for two whole hours I am telling you, we're building supermen and superwomen. After that, the last hour in that pot is called Anopa. Listen carefully. We've already done our first exercise of the day. Our second one is Anopa. So these things are ritualistic. These are things we will do seven days a week, together or alone. But you have to do it. So, ano pa. Ano means mouth. Pa means good. So, to make the mouth good. How do you make the mouth good? You have to clean the mouth. And then you have to put something in the mouth. This is how our ancestors say it should work. In the morning, you shouldn't eat sausage, beans, bangers and mash and rare, rare, rare. You should be eating herbs. Why? Because get this. Some herbs are fat blockers, some herbs are fat breakers, some herbs are poison distillers, poison blockers. There's that, that, ra 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 de 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 You combine these and you drink some and you eat some in many forms. You make your mouth good and you line the stomach with all the necessary acids required to break down poisons and bad things that you know are in our food system. But then you know that herbs and spices and things like that can, you know, can um, neutralize and, you know, help, help us to get rid of. So, Anopa, in the morning, the last hour, you make the mouth good by putting these things inside you. That's the second pot over. After that, the third pot is called Eriamre. Eriamre. Eria means sun. Mre means time. So in English, if someone says sun time, it means it's time for the sun. Why at that time? At that time, the sun scientifically is called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis means growth, growth. So our second exercise, sorry, our third exercise from breathing to eating to now, growing, we're going to make sure we access the sun, the sun, for photosynthesis. Why that sun? Because the sun is one pill for all forms of life, including buffaloes and rhinos with tough hides. Do you see what I mean? So, it has to be time that allows everyone to access it. The human's hide can access the sun best. And the sun that grows the human is at Iriamre between 8 o'clock to just 12 o'clock. 8 a.m. to 12 o'clock. That whole part is growth hormone sun. So we will take that. During that time, we will take in our next meal. Now we can have something mighty. Not mighty as in big, because our plates will be cut. Listen, you've had air for two hours. You, you've had earth mixed with water. So you've had air, earth, and water. And now you've had sun. Believe you me, you will actually feel the difference. But to top it up, now you can have your chicken sarnies and your not what, what not and this and that and that. And your, you know, chicken burgers and this and that and that. All these things are not good for you. But get this, you align your stomach in the morning with things that break these things down quicker and get them out of you and stop their poisons from even affecting you. 
or you can just stay healthy and carry on eating healthily. So that's a Riamre. The next pot, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. It's too hot. That sun is not good for the human's growth. So you have to take the human out of it. But at that time, we call it Enjum Mre. Enjum Mre. Enjum means music. Mre means time. So now we're going to do music time. But music time means, you know, Africans, we use music to dance. We use dance to exercise. So we're going to do our next exercise, which is a physical because we have to come away from the sun but then now we go inside for the kids we can now you know tell them stories quick one answer stories this that that but you clap you sing you jump you do this you exercise the same we're going to do the same at music time four hours after that the next part which is the fifth part it's called Anaju. Anaju. Oh, sorry. You, you again. You can have another meal, a, a smaller plate again. Something you know. It doesn't matter. In the, in um, what you call it, Iriamre, yeah, as well. And then after that is Anaju. Anaju. Anu means mouth. Ju means cool. So it's getting late. You need to cool down. Everything needs to be calming down. You need to spend the energy. That's why at the Riamre, you were running around, exercising, singing, dancing, jumping, doing this, da, da, da. You were spending the energy you accumulated from um, Ahumachi, the breathing, that energy, because you needed it to go through the day. But now you need to make sure you take most of it out to help you get a good sleep and a good rest. You've done a Riamre heavy exercise, taking most of it out. Now it's Anajo. You're going to have some light, something not greasy, something very healthy, something that actually aids in your food's digestion overnight. Something light, yeah? And then the stories go down mellow. Mellow, the mouth cools down. And then at that time, by, um, by 8 o'clock, 8 p.m., everything is done. And from 8 p.m. to 12 p.m., it's called Adir Asa. Everything has finished. Adir means everything, something. Asa means finished. So time has finished. So we're going to follow this ritual, routine of every day, making sure together or individually, but we keep this routine to make sure that we empower ourselves and attach ourselves to nature and we will become nature's people, black or white, it wouldn't matter. But I'm telling you, you follow this routine, even as a normal person, immediately you will start to lose weight. I'm killing mosquitoes, I don't know where they're coming from, I swear that someone, someone must have left the window open or something. Yeah, you see what I mean? You can burn weight just from doing these things. And the funny thing is, they're family exercises. I've got many of them coming. I've got many of them coming. Do you see what I mean? But I told you, we stand for something. We stand for something. It's not just a football team. We stand for something. We stand for something. We stand to make a change. We stand to make a change. So I understand the reasons why we do what we do. But yeah, even when you follow our exercise routine, our rituals, you will get well. And when you follow our, our attack plans and our attack formulations, and I can testify, the British will testify that they could never conquer the Akans. They signed the treaty of peace, but they never actually conquered the Akans. And you have to admit, since the British adopted this method, even politics is like that. The British flag is the symbol of politics. Divide 
All the people are British. They're all blue. But if you want to control them, you have to divide them. So even though they're still blue, they've been divided into eight quarters. How many parties does England really have? About, I think about nine, ten or less. But they've been divided. So everyone's ideology is different. So they never have one consensus to make it good for the people. Everyone's fighting for individual parties. And the British flag is there to remind the politicians of how to keep the people in check. Never reveal the secret that that is how the people are kept in check. So the flag is always there to remind them. This is the plan. It's the same plan we use to conquer the enemy. But it's also the same plan we use to control the people at home. For control. But you can use good control to achieve good things. We stand for something. We mean something. We're not just a football team. We're not just playing football. We're, we're playing football to win against racism. We're playing football to, to win against division. We're playing football to bring us together. We're playing football to make football fun again. We're playing football for all the good reasons. We stand for something. Okay, we have a video.